is Jamie with Stillmeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in Marco Polo 2. So this is the sequel to, to Marco Polo. It has a lot of mechanisms found in Marco Polo, but the action spaces in the game are, are different and the map is different. Uh, some of the images that you'll see in this video should help you get an, get an idea of how it's different, but you can also watch some videos to see how they're different. Um, there, there are various new mechanisms in the game, including the inclusion of Jade, a new resource that's kind of a wild resource, but you need it for certain things. Uh, there's an element of, of guilds that you can obtain so you can uh, use certain routes in the game. I think that opens up the routes a little bit and also closes them down because if you don't have a guild, you can't use a route. And there's an element of, of set collection with these shields that are placed around the board that you need to find a way to, if you want to, to uh, drop off buildings and as many different shield cities as possible uh, to gain a bunch of points at the, at the end of the game. I think that set collection, spatial set collection is really cool. But my favorite mechanism, it's just a little tweak in the game, is the idea that the contracts in the game, rather than being kind of abstracted and removed from the map, like in the original, if you want to get a contract, you, go, you just go to an action and you gain one or two contracts. Um, so it's kind of removed from the, the map, the movement of the board. In Marco Polo 2, the contracts are associated with different cities themselves. They're still randomized, but you, you can't get a contract unless you have a presence in a specific city that has contracts associated with it. So this drives more attention and more focus to the map itself um, rather than the, the action spaces, which I think is a good move in the game. Uh, I love action spaces and worker placement action spaces in general, but I like that a lot more of, of the attention is on the map where, where you're going in the direct, the, the steps that you've taken on the map um, and the paths that you built on the map have a huge impact on your decisions and the outcomes in Marco Polo 2. And a big part of that is the contracts themselves because you can't get contracts unless they are um, on a city that you have uh, a presence in. I think that's just a little tweak, a nice, really a small addition, but a meaningful one uh, to drive more attention to the map and make the map matter more uh, as compared to the original game. And I, I like that. I like, I like when, uh, kind of like, in, I'll bring one of my games up, inside, how the, the idea that the resources are kept on the board themselves rather than pulled off. It keeps your attention on the board itself rather than some abstracted pool of resources or pool of actions that are off the board. Although you do have your player mats inside that, that are not incorporated into the board itself. Um, yeah, but that's my favorite mechanism in Marco Polo 2. I would love to hear your thoughts. If there's a core mechanism or an interesting new mechanism in Marco Polo 2 that stood out to you, or if this mechanism uh, reminds you of another mechanism in the game where the game is doing something to, to drive more of your attention uh, towards the, the map itself. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks.